In this video, we're going to be expanding upon Gregor Mendel's findings of the monohybrid cross and looking at ways that we can predict which characteristics will be inherited by offspring organisms when we look at multiple traits all at once. And this is something that Gregor Mendel did himself after he looked at the seed shape of pea plants, what he did is he investigated a number of other observable characteristics of pea plants, such as color of the seeds, color of the pea pods, shape of the pea pods, and so on, and generally found that all of these traits were inherited following the same pattern of dominant and recessive inheritance that he found seed shape followed as well. Now, once he looked at each of these traits independently of each other, what Gregor Mendel did is he wanted to figure out whether the inheritance of one trait was directly connected with the inheritance of another trait. For example, uh, does the allele of seed shape influence the color of seeds as well, or are all of these characteristics inherited independently of of one another and that was the question that Mendel wanted to answer when he modified the monohybrid cross into what we call a dihybrid cross test and this works exactly the same as a monohybrid cross in that he was reproducing two hybrid organisms two hybrid pea plants only looking at two different characteristics at the same time instead of just one. So in this case, we're going to use his findings of seed shape and seed color as the two characteristics we're looking at in our dihybrid cross. And as we can find from Mendel's findings, we can see that round seeds are dominant to the recessive phenotype, which are wrinkled seeds. This is exactly what we saw in the previous video. So we're going to designate round seeds as uppercase S for seed, uh, and lowercase s represents the wrinkled phenotype. Now, the second characteristic that we're looking at is color. So we're going to designate the dominant allele as uppercase C for color and lowercase c also for color, and we can see that Mendel's findings showed that yellow seeds were the dominant seed color, while green seeds were the recessive seed color, at least for seeds. Now, a dihybrid cross is going to assume that the two organisms reproducing are both heterozygous for each of the characteristics, meaning that the father pea plant is going to have one dominant and one recessive allele for seed shape and one dominant and recessive allele for seed color. And this is also going to apply to the mother organism, showing that for both characteristics that we are studying, both of these are heterozygous. Now, if we go to the law of independent assortment, meaning that offspring cannot inherit both the paternal and maternal characteristics, but if we assume, as we will find out Mendel's correct assumption, that each characteristic is inherited independently, we can predict that there are a total of four gamete possibilities that can be produced. For example, with inheritance, we can either have a gamete, a sperm or an egg, that contains the dominant seed shape allele and also the dominant seed color allele, or the gamete can contain the dominant seed shape allele with the recessive seed color allele. So this would be smooth seeds that are yellow colored, but this gamete codes for smooth seeds that are green colored because that is the recessive phenotype. Now, conversely, if seed shape it gives the recessive allele, we would write this as lowercase s with the dominant color allele here, and the final possibility would be the recessive allele for both traits like this. And this represents all of the different possibilities of each gamete that could be produced depending on which allele is chosen during sperm or egg production. And this applies to both parents. So we would have 
each having the dominant allele here for this gamete, one dominant and one recessive here, one recessive and one dominant here, and finally both recessive alleles like this. And that way when this gamete fertilizes this gamete here, we would have a diploid zygote being produced, in this case one that contains two copies of each of the dominant alleles like this. So this organism here would develop as being homozygous dominant for both characteristics, and then it's simply a matter of completing our Punnett square following all of these possibilities. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And all that we need to do is look at each of the two alleles for each trait that the offspring organism is going to inherit. So this organism would inherit big S and little s and two big Cs. So this would be heterozygous and homozygous dominant for C for C color. And this one down here would be heterozygous for both characteristics. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out the rest of it and you can cross-reference what you see uh, if you try this yourself and make sure that each of the possible outcomes, each of the possible zygotes matches what the Punnett square would say as well. Now that the Punnett square is complete, what we need to analyze is what phenotypes each possible zygote is going to produce. Now the good thing about the dominant alleles is as soon as the dominant allele is present, it overrides whatever the recessive allele is. And so what we need to consider simply is whether the dominant allele is present. And if we think about it, there are actually four different phenotype possibilities. The first of which is where we have one dominant allele of each characteristic. So these would be round seeded peas that are yellow colored. And if we look through each of them, we see that this is true for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine possibilities. So each of these nine possibilities has at least one dominant allele for the seed shape characteristic and one dominant allele for the seed color. So we can say that there is a nine out of 16 chance that the offspring would exhibit the dominant phenotype for both of these characteristics here. Now, if we were to look for wrinkled yellow seeds, this would be, because wrinkled is the recessive phenotype, this would be homozygous recessive for seed shape, but would contain at least one dominant allele for the seed color characteristic and we can see let's identify them with squares we can see one two three possible zygotes would receive this combination of characteristics and so we say that there is a 3 and 16 possibility that we would be homozygous recessive for trait one and exhibit the dominant trait for trait number two. For round green seeds, this would mean that we have the dominant trait for seed shape, but we would have two recessive alleles for color because green is the recessive trait here. So I'm going to make a diamond shape box around these, one, two, and three. So we can see that each of the 
uh, gametes that is encircled with a diamond-shaped box has one copy of the dominant allele for seed shape, but that the recessive phenotype for color shows through, and so we have a 3 and 16 chance of this phenotype being the case. And finally, we have our gamete that is going to be homozygous recessive for both traits, and we can see right here at the bottom, this is the only one of the possible gametes that we make that is going to be homozygous recessive for both traits. So what this means, or what this Punnett square means, is it allows us to calculate not just the percent chance of one trait being dominant or recessive, but with multiple traits as well. So this phenotypic ratio is what we call the nine to three to three to one ratio. And you will find that regardless of which characteristics that exhibit dominant and recessive inheritance patterns we apply to a dihybrid cross, all phenotypic ratios will be based on this ratio that we see here. And this is exactly what Mendel found when he did dihybrid crosses with pea plants. He found that alleles of one trait didn't generally affect the alleles of another trait, and therefore that each trait was determined independently of the other, which allows us to make relatively easy probability predictions depending on what the traits that we were investigating were. Now, before we get to the next video, I would recommend that you try this second example here. So in this case, we're going to be investigating two different traits. So in this case, flower color is one and the color of pea pods is another. So firstly, when you jump into this, identify what the dominant and recessive traits are for pod color and for flower color, and then see if you can identify what the inheritance ratio is for each of the combinations of phenotypes here are. And before this, in the next video, we will investigate variations on the 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 inheritance ratio of dihybrid crosses.